In this demo, we're going to learn how to composite together multiple exposures in an HDR setting uh, using Photoshop's HDR Pro and do it in a way that's not going to look cartoonish and surreal like a lot of HDR images end up looking. You'll see here that we're starting with an array of five images. This is the first image that the camera thinks is the correct exposure, otherwise known as EV0. And we can see that the window is a little bit blown out. The shadows are very, very dark. Uh, here is one stop underexposed, or EV negative one, and you see a little bit better detail outside the window, even though the shadows now are pretty black. EV minus two, or underexposed by two stops, we have even better detail outside the window in the other bright areas. Uh, again, the shadows are completely black. Here is one stop overexposed, EV plus one. Uh, window is blown out, but we've got a little bit better detail in the shadows, and even better when we go to EV plus two, or two stops overexposed, the window is completely gone, but the shadows look way better. So this is going to be our five stop array. You don't have to shoot five stops. You could shoot three stops. You could shoot seven stops, but you want them basically an array of uh, three or five or seven stops uh, apart, one stop apart each. Okay, uh, before I go on from here, I'm going to show you two different methods to do this. But before we do any of them, we need to go to Photoshop and make sure that we have a few preferences and presets set. So I'm going to bring up Photoshop. And there's my eventual finished image, but we're going to get rid of that for a second. I'm going to go into Photoshop to my preferences and down to Camera Raw. And you want to go to the Camera Raw preferences, and it might start you off at General, but you want to switch to File Handling Preferences. And then right here under TIFF, we want it to say automatically open all supported TIFFs basically into Camera Raw. So any TIFF that could be open in Camera Raw will be opened by Camera Raw. Click OK. Now we're going to go to the Edit menu and down to Color Settings. And in Color Settings, I'm going to keep my um, uh, working space as Adobe RGB 1998. And down here, where I often have this set to convert to the working RGB, in case you have that, you want to switch this so that it preserves embedded profiles. We've got some images that are in Pro Photo uh, color space, and we're going to keep that color space when we open them into Photoshop. Okay, otherwise we'll click OK. Let's go back to Lightroom and we're going to see the Lightroom method for um, getting to a certain position in the, our process. And then we'll learn the Photoshop version. Very similar. Okay, so here I have my five images. I'm going to select them all. If they weren't already selected, I can do Command A or Control A if you're Windows. And, or you can shift click, whichever way. You got them all selected. And now we're going to go to the photo menu to edit in and we're going to pick Merge to HDR Pro in Photoshop not open a smart object. At this point, Photoshop goes to work opening these images. It's going to create a stack of them in the layers palette. You'll actually kind of see it happen here. It's doing some work behind the scenes and then it's going to kind of collapse them all together and let you see this in the HDR Pro workspace. We'll be there in just a minute as it's getting things ready to go. And here we are. Now, when you first get to this workspace, it's likely going to look like this. So don't be surprised if that looks a little bit different on my screen than yours. However, at this point, I'm going to show you the Photoshop method for getting to this exact same point. So I'm going to hit Cancel. You would hit OK probably if you'd gotten to this point through Lightroom. Actually, don't hit OK just yet. I've got something or other to show you. But we're going to get back to the same point uh, by a Photoshop route. So I hit cancel. So how we get there through Photoshop if you didn't have your images in Lightroom. I prefer to work from Lightroom, but you might want to work just from Photoshop. This is how we do it. In Photoshop, you're going to go to the File menu, down to Automate, and over to Merge to HDR Pro. It's going to bring up this little dialog, and one of your options is to browse. So I'm going to browse and go find my images which are in my HDR demo folder. Here they are. I'm going to select those images and click Open. And now click OK. By the way, you'll notice there's an option down here to attempt to automatically align source images so that if you're, maybe you shot with a tripod, but maybe the tripod, the camera got bumped a little bit, you want to make sure that all those images line up perfectly. That's what it's going to do. So I'm going to click OK. Photoshop's now going to go through the same process that we saw before 
and get back to the same point that we got to through Lightroom. And here we are. As I said before, when we got here through Lightroom, when you first arrive at this workspace, it's likely gonna look like this. Uh, your image is gonna look a little funky and sort of flat contrast. Um, and over on the right-hand side, you might be in 16-bit or 8-bit mode, but we need to switch that mode to 32-bit. When we do that, a bunch of sliders disappear and you're left with just this. And here's how you want this to look. You want this option off. It might be on by default, turn it off. Okay, at this point, we're now simply gonna go down here and click OK. Photoshop now does some more work, and it's gonna present us a, a not great looking image in Photoshop. Don't panic. Um, yes, the window's blown out, uh, but don't worry. What we're gonna do from here is save this off as a 32-bit kind of mega raw file. And what we're going to do here is go to the File menu, Save As, name it whatever you want. I'm going to send this to my desktop. I've already got a couple of these demo ones. I'm going to call this number, number four. You send it to wherever you'd like. Down here in the format, you've got to switch this to TIFF. Do not leave it in Photoshop format. Make sure that it's TIFF. We're going to leave this option on to embed the color profile and hit Save. Now, in this little TIFF dialog, this is very critical. We want to make sure that the bit depth is 32-bit float, uh, and the image compression should be set to none. Then we click OK. Now, Photoshop is saving off kind of a separate version. Think of it almost like exporting out a version of this file. So this file that's, that we're left with looking here, we don't need it, and when we click it closed, it's going to say, do you want to save it? Don't panic. You did save off what you wanted. You don't need this anymore, so we can click just don't save. Now, at this point, we've got that file exported to our desktop, and I'm going to bring up my desktop, and here it is, untitled HDR4. You can see I've done this demo a few times. There it is, ready to go. I can drag this straight into Photoshop, and it's going to open up into Adobe Camera Raw Workspace, just like any other raw file. And at this point, I can go to town and, and work on this, um, just like you would any other raw file. Now, I want to bring in more of detail in the highlights, so hey, I'm going to bring down highlights. Wow, look at that. All that detail emerges back here in the highlights. I might want to bring up my shadow tones, and I can. And look at all that information show up in my shadow tones. You know, I think maybe this needs a little bit of boost in overall exposure. Hey, look at that. Just like any other raw file, maybe I want the temperature to be a little bit cooler. Maybe I want to bring down the saturation just a little bit. Maybe I want to add a little bit of clarity. You can do this just like you're editing any other uh, RAW file, and it looks fantastic, and it looks like a real photograph that has all the detail that I would see if I was standing there, but my camera couldn't capture. At this point, I can open this into Photoshop and do any additional Photoshop editing I would like I would with any normal file. I can also open this image in Lightroom. Now, you need to import it into Lightroom to begin with, so if I go to import, and I'm going to go to my desktop, here is my number four image. I'll turn off this one. I'll just import number four. I'm just simply going to add it. And here is that image in Lightroom. I can go to the develop module. Need to pick that image. Here in my develop module, it actually carried over the edits that I did in Adobe Camera Raw, but if I was just say, let's start back at reset, I can still do those edits here in um, Adobe Camera Raw just like I did, or sorry, here I can do them in Lightroom just like I did in Adobe Camera Raw. All the same adjustments. Like I desaturated that last one just a little bit, I brought up clarity and you know, I think that, that image looks really terrific. I might even bring down magenta a touch. And I've got a very photographic looking image that has that full tonal range. Okay, and that is it.